just a hack. It's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Welcome back to Hack City. Joe DeLeon, Sean Anderson. We're coming at you with the semifinal preview. Sean, it's finally the semis of the FCS football playoffs. We're going to be talking about North Dakota State playing Montana and Albany versus South Dakota State. All of that coming up and more on today's episode. Before we get to that, though, Sean, can you just tell our listeners about our good friends over at Bet Online, who are probably going to be taking a lot more money from me this weekend? Yeah, I'm going to stop being a coward and a hypocrite. I'm just going to admit that I, I won't stop betting on the NFL no matter how many times uh, I get reamed out. Uh, they have just taken advantage of me this weekend. And I always say, beginning of the week, you know what? Let's just stick to college ball, which I'm better at. Uh, then the NFL rolls right back again. And you see the jerseys and the walkouts. You're like, I'm taking something live at Bet Online, And I'm getting involved because you have to get in on the mix. Head to the website today. Get in on the action. See all the updated odds for the week. Remember to use promo code BLEAV, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus in your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Thank you, Sean. Um, all right, let's start off with South Dakota State versus Albany. We've got, we've got a lot of typical teams here playing in the semis. Albany is a little bit of a newcomer. I don't know off the top of my head the last time Albany reached around this far that they're going to be playing in the semifinal round, but it's an accomplishment. Nonetheless, far and away the best CAA team. It, it's tough for them with this season that they've produced that they're running into the buzzsaw that is South Dakota State. Now, if I were to pinpoint, Sean, how I think Albany needs to play in order to pull out this, this win, they have to do whatever they can to fluster Mark Gronowski. They have to do whatever they can to get after him with that very talented defensive line that they have of Junk Cage, Charles Jean, and Simon. They are all very productive tackle for loss and sack getters, three of the most statistically dominant players defensively in the country. They have to use those guys to their advantage. They did not get home enough against Idaho. That can't happen in this game against South Dakota State if they want to win. Yeah, Albany's defense is legit. They are a um, a fun team, and it looks like this is the deepest they've gone in the FCS playoffs. 2011, they went to the first round, lost to Stony Brook. 2019, went to the first and second round. They beat Central Connecticut, and then they lost to Montana State. Mm. 21-47, they got a beat down. Uh, this is the farthest yeah. they've been as a FCS program, and this is a team that's reflective of them being the farthest they've been. Uh, in their history. They have a good quarterback. They have a great defense and they have playmakers that can take the top off. And if you're looking at Albany, you're looking at their success. You got to get the other team on their heels early, both defensively and offensively. You have to be aggressive because South Dakota state is naturally aggressive. They have that natural buildup of talent and strength that turns into an aggressive play style just because you have the physical dominance. Albany has to force that a little bit more. They have to they have to force the ball downfield. Even if you don't love it, you have to show that you're willing to put your foot on the gas pedal and try your hardest to get to South Dakota State early. Because they're, South Dakota State's a great second-half team. Mm. They are great. They make fantastic adjustments, and they will close you out. So Albany needs to get in involved early in preparation for what South Dakota State's going to fix at half. You brought up... The second point that I had that I thought was really important right now, you have this hot connection of Brevin Easton and Reese Poffenbarger. They're connecting on an unreal level. And I kind of joked about how they just kept going back to him and going back to him and taking these deep shots. And it felt like they were playing NCAA 14 where they're just like, okay, he keeps getting open and they keep trying to cover him way too close and pressing him at the line of scrimmage. And he's just getting open over the top keep taking those shots, but here's like the even just more simplified take on how they need to play in this game, Sean. Too often do I see, and let's be real here, we know that Albany is the underdog in this situation. Too often we see underdogs step into these games and they play not to lose. They come into these games and they, they approach it as, we're going to play super conservatively, we're going to try not to turn the football over. We're not going to send too heavy a pressure on defense. We're just going to 
you know, Ben, don't bring, break, keep everything in front of us. We want to play clean football to win the game. You are not in that type of position. And I hate it when teams do this. When they've gotten as far as they did by being aggressive, by will, being willing to take those shots, by being willing to send pressure, and then the minute you face somebody that is more talented than you, you suddenly scrap all that. You are in a do-or-die situation where you're facing one of the most talented teams that we've seen in FCS football ever. This is one of the best teams that has a ton of experienced players. Be aggressive. Play with nothing to lose. Play with your hair on fire. Do whatever you can to rattle this South Dakota State team. And like you said, try to get up on them early. Take those deep shots is how you're going to accomplish that. Yeah, Albany needs to brink that limiter uh, and then be able to go the extra mile when you look at it like that. You make fun of something I said? They need to push past that mental limiter and say, hey, we're, we're in the semis. It's, it's us. We, we have a 25% chance of getting this thing done, bringing it home. And they can. They have the talent to do it. But you can't. I loved what you were talking about. You can't play to not lose. It's a great accomplishment getting to the semis. Maybe they'll put up a banner, but you don't put up on a ba- you don't put up a banner for for just playing not to lose. You put up a banner for winning. I mean, we've come on. I mean, the Celtics recently have been banner putter uppers a, a lot. There, there. I would hope Albany doesn't. I mean, Albany I would hope so. Well. Also, I would hope so. Also, don't just be satisfied with getting there. You need to go for the kill. They need to. All right, good enough is not enough. I, I, both of us have been tormented as of late watching football programs that we might root for settle, be complacent, say this is good. It's never good enough. Winning is all that matters. They know that. Their coach is telling them that. Everyone's telling them. But it's true, especially when you're not the favorite. It's all that matters. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? You're not going to yeah. embarrass yourselves. You're a good football team. And even if you do, even if you go out there and it, 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 you look goofy on something, who cares? In the you give it literally, take every chance possible. Don't do something stupid like going like a fourth on thirteen uh, in, in the first quarter. Yeah, Don't play a good football game. Take your but, take your but it, chances. Right. It, um. It, what needs to be clear, not clarified, but like. What we're talking about here is what you're saying. Don't go for it on fourth and 13 in your own. Somebody's going to read into what I was saying and say, never punt. And and then, you know, do the onside. I I don't. Someone's going to read into think think that's what I'm saying. I don't think, I don't think our listeners are dumb enough to say that. But what that means though, is that when you're, don't be mean to our listener. I mean, our listeners say that we're dumb. I didn't say anything about them. I didn't say anything. You made a look. You made a look. You made a, you made a very revealing revealing look. You can pull the tape. I don't think I made a look. I just watched you make a face. But one of the things that always peeves the shit out of me in these types Mm. of games, and again, I'm talking about here, I hate it when when teams show up, play not to lose. It really peeves you. Shut the hell up. When these teams will be in these fourth and short, like fourth and three, fourth and four type spots on like your opponent's 40-yard line, and they'll punt. That, to me, pisses me the F off. Don't do that shit. Don't. Just go for it. Go for it. Go for it. You're not going to get... You're playing one of the best defenses in FCS football. You got to take advantage of any opportunities that you have to put points on the board. I, I It boggles my mind when teams choose not to go for it on fourth and five or less when they're past the 50-yard line or near the 50-yard line. It bothers me when competent teams do that. It does not bother me with with, with the incompetence that play the sport of football. The yeah, like Iowa shouldn't do because, that, but uh, but yes. Albany should but you, because they're the offensively semis, proficient. If you're in the semis of the FCS playoffs, you have the plays. You have the plays drawn up. You're a good enough coach to get you there. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Have the plays ready. Have the plays and the situations ready. Nothing bothers me more than when I see a coach just on the sideline. I could tell when they burn their play. They burn their two-point conversion play. They got a penalty. They had to do it again, and then what are we doing? That was our one play. Have play. Have it ready. Have it ready. Be ready to be aggressive. Don't look at the scoreboard in the second quarter. And say, "Oh, we got to turn this thing on." You can't survive like that. You can't beat South Dakota State like that. South Dakota State, on the flip side, just play your brand of football. That's mm-hmm. all you need to do. Oh my God, you control the tempo. You control the pace all year. If you've had, 
issues or hiccups. That's normal. But every time they close a game out, it's on their terms. It's on their terms. They dictate the pace. They dictate how they want the other team to play and how they want them to play. They'll run it down your throat. They'll pass it if they need to. They'll, the defense, they want you passing like a madman in the fourth quarter. They want you doing that. So you can go three and out, turn the ball over. They can wind five more minutes down the clock. South Coast State is just keep operating as you've operated. No notes. I don't know if I have notes, Joe. I, I well, I think that what you I'm are not, saying, not, yeah. what you are saying, is a note. I, I don't know, by the way, if if my if this Idaho shirt I'm wearing is just so white that it's like completely blowing out my my, my camera. My camera keeps my. What? Do you think what's under the shirt is is shut is the hell up? Any shut up, God, you suck. Shirt itself. You, look, you're the only you're person to move out to LA and not get a tan. That's false. Um, to talk about those South Dakota State. I think that we can elaborate on what you just said, though. Play your brand of football. This does happen, not often, but we do see this happen when you've got these ultra-talented, experienced teams that are the favorite to win titles or to win a conference that overcomplicate things. I don't think South Dakota State's going to do that, but this is a first-year head coach, so we, we, you know, we, we don't really have precedent for what could happen in this game. But to just really hit home what you're saying, play your brand of football. Control the time of possession. Continue to run the ball. Don't try to press things. And, and I think that your passing attack is great, but your bread and butter is running the ball and then setting things up yeah. off of it. The it, one thing I, I'll go a step further here really quickly before you chime in. I think back to, and I know that there were a lot of underlying factors that caused Georgia to lose to Alabama. There were some injuries and whatnot. But when we watched that game, Overall, thematically, what cost them it is that they didn't play their brand. They didn't play the aggressive style of football. The you know, they they tried to get too cute with with the with that yeah. end around that they tried to run where they fumbled. They tried to do all of these things to manufacture yardage because they allowed their opponent, who had a really good defensive line, to dictate what they were going to do the whole game. And they kept trying to counter what they were doing. And they lost the minute that they started doing that. I think in like the second quarter was when they they really kept trying to counter all of these adjustments that Alabama brought to the table. What I'm getting at here is don't be like Georgia. You have the best team in the country. If you get popped in the mouth early, which is possible because of how good this defensive line is, don't allow that to rattle you and keep playing your brand of football because eventually they will crack and you will score points. I like that you went to Georgia. I had another team in mind, and then another one popped up. The quick one, uh, Idaho got too cute in the playoffs, and look what happened to them. At times, they just got too cute, and they got bounced. Very talented team, had some very good wins. They messed up with their own recipe, and then they're out. Uh, Georgia is a great comparison. I was drawing uh, pro uh, Philly in the last couple weeks. We've seen them have some brutal losses. What have they been doing? They brought in DeAndre Swift. They have all these running backs. They have a great running quarterback. They're not running the ball. They're trying to mm. air it out, and they yeah. keep on getting beat badly. They're deviating from the from the scheme. Stay in the scheme. You, you you keep winning football games, and so far so good for South Dakota State. Not saying that they've done anything like that, but stay with the scheme. If you think if you're sitting at night, you're you're the coach. You're sitting like, oh, maybe we'll do this. Don't operate as normal right what is the daydream yes. you're living the daydream keep keep performing as you have been i know it's very hard for humans because you're always looking for next and football coaches are wired like crazy people where even if you've been perfect they're still looking for something else and that's what makes football so great and coaches so so crazy and, and interesting but oh my god just keep calm if south dakota state stays calm and composed they 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 roll they roll mm. and that's just, that that's the truth of this matchup. If Albany yeah. can get them on their heels, then we have a real football game. And if you can't tell, we both think South Dakota State wins this game. Uh, they they have been fantastic. They win this football game, plain and simple. Um, yeah. Any any final thoughts there? You I don't like think so. Ready. I think all, I think Albany can give them a, a, a some similar bump uh, from Villanova. I think all they should be doing is watching this Villanova tape. Watch the yeah. all, all you need to do because you're not playing the same as 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 the other other conferences. CAA ball is different. Scout the hell out of that game. Just just get yourself locked in. North Dakota State versus Montana. 
I think at the start of the season, actually, let me let me go as far as this. After week four, if we told you that Montana was playing North Dakota State, everybody would have been sitting here saying, oh, Montana's, Mo- Montana's not seeded and North Dakota State's the two seed, right? And here we are. It's the complete opposite. And Montana's one team's been rolling co- and everyone's been doing good. Shut up. <laughs> let me talk. Just let me speak. God. Say Fuck. Montana right. Fuck. Just let me talk. <laughs> what? Uh, th- I don't have this many verbal issues on other shows because the minute I have one, I start stumbling because you criticize me the minute I make one mistake. Look, I've been going through the tape. I, and I told you I've been going through some tape lately of us. You get on my ass pretty good. So I'm not, take, I, I'm not taking this. Not as much as you. Not as much as you. Montana in this circumstance, though, to be talking about the fact that North Dakota State is the team that is losing their head coach. And Montana is the one that is surging. And that's running the ball well. And their quarterback is playing fantastic. And their defensive line is smothering and dominant. You would have called us crazy if we told you that after week three or week four. You, you would have looked at us like we had three heads. Week seven, later on, even like yeah. all, all, all year. I would have outside of the Montana fans. The Montana fans would have swore that they knew that this was going to happen. <laughs> all right, no, we're not no digs. We're not taking any digs. Um, the Montana angle first, Sean. I think that they're just playing such a strong brand of football. They have one of the most dynamic running quarterbacks in the country. One of the best athletes that we see at the position this year uh, playing quarterback to the point where if Gilman and Osmo get taken out of the game, Clifton McDowell is able to put the team on his back and he's able to extend plays with his legs. When when those passing lanes aren't aren't opening up, he has been phenomenal. I think that the success here for, for them is one, you need to find early success running the ball outside of McDowell because we saw last week that McDowell was able to do a lot and help you win that game. But if you get your run game playing at the level that you're used to, it's not going to be as close. You're not going to be in overtime fighting for the final plays to stay in the playoffs. You win the game a little more handedly. You run out the clock. You close out the game. The other side of this, and this is something that we have said I, I feel extremely redundant saying this, and North Dakota State fans might not like this because the way that he played last week, he played phenomenal. And I'm going to talk about how he played last week and how it reflects to this game in a second. But Cam Miller at times has been effectively flustered by aggressive defenses and good defenses yeah, and also tends to struggle in third and long situations. So I look at the opportunity here. Stand up and stop them on early downs. Try to send pressures as much as you can when they throw the football. And force Cam Miller to make mistakes and to take sacks. I'm not saying that's a simple, easy endeavor. But if you can hit home and be productive going after him, it will lead to turnovers. It will lead to incompletions. And it will lead to you getting the football back to put more points on the board. I'm incredibly intrigued from for this matchup uh and this is gonna not from a narcissistic point of view uh and it's gonna sound like it at times but we counted both these teams out at at times i did i thought that at times neither of these teams is going to make the playoffs and if so uh they would get an early boot so drawing it back to at least myself and part of the show expectations thought they were cooked geese since then and I'm not saying we had any effect, but since then, and since they were in their biggest slumps of the year, both teams started playing we football. It's been incredible. The different team that I've seen from Montana, when they decided to get it in gear midseason, and people are still bringing up my 17 ranking, which I still stand by at that time. But since then, since the week after that, we football like i don't know if i've seen before they are so they have completed themselves and, and and you can see the chemistry on the field you can see everybody knows their assignments same thing from north dakota state you can tell that the effort has increased on the outside from the wide receivers blocking 
inside to the center blocking. Both teams are locked the hell in. This is going to be such an incredible matchup, and the goofballs at North Dakota State added fuel to the fire, and it's just, it, it, you just, you can't imagine going into a game with such stakes and, and in a season with such tribulations the mm. entire year. And then, go ahead, coach is leaving, we'll rally, we'll be pissed, we'll go with whatever mindset, but I truly believe when they get on that field, they're going to give Montana their best. They're going to play, I, I think they're going to play their best game of the year, and I think Montana's going to do the same. I want to talk about that in a, in a second, but just to throw in like a really deep poll for anyone who's, we actually have like a good amount of former FCS players that tune into the show now. Like we have some former North Dakota state players, Montana player. We, we, I've gotten plenty of messages from some former players that understand what I'm talking about here. If you're Montana, talk shit on the field, talk mean, shit about your, their coach leaving quick. And th those who, those who have played know what I'm talking about along the line of scrimmage in the trenches I, every down I would be talking about their head coach leaving every single play I would be talking about that shit you when think, you're running you outfield on punt when you're running outfield on kickoff like bro your coach doesn't even want you your he don't want you he don't want he's gonna, he's gonna go coach linebackers you're not good enough you're not good and, enough sorry yeah. ass Look, and I know that, and we're going to talk about this in a second, it does feel like it does feel like North Dakota State is definitely rallying around this more than I anticipated, and I want to talk about that in a quick second. But I'm telling you, if you consistently keep getting in your opponent's head, and when things are really tense at the end of the game, yeah. it leads to a punch, uh, it leads to a missed assignment, it leads to a false false start, penalties, whatever it penalties. is. Penalties, there's so, the mental aspect of this game is going to be bonkers. Yeah. Go ahead, go to Cali with them. Go to Cali. Ride the bench, ride the bench in Cali with them. All anything, anything and everything is fair play. And mm. and this is going to get scrappy. But the only unfortunate part is that North Dakota State has been known to be one of these perennial teams who's as strong as they are on the field, it never seems like they get flustered in the mental capacity. Like their mental toughness has equaled their their on field performance since we've started covering them. Uh, them and it never seems like there's uh turmoil in, in in Fargo never seen that but now we we got a, we got an up close chance in a high stakes situation to see how they handle the pressure to see how they handle the talk because now somebody really can talk to them they really can this is the year gonna be interesting gonna be super interesting now it does feel like that the team is rallying around him. And a lot of people have kind of commented on multiple times head coaches have left during national championship runs and they've still managed to get the job done. Maybe this does end up being more of a rallying point than we think because there is a rich history of it happening because of the rich history of success and coaches being given opportunities to take over eventually other programs. Tamarick Williams was one of the people I saw post a message on Twitter. There's been a lot of players that have posted messages on Twitter, which is just a very positive sign. And they've done a really good job of keeping everything in house and it not being, you know, a really public thing. And like seeing guys like maybe even put their name in the portal. Like we've got Texas guys putting their name in the portal right now, and they're about to play a playoff game yeah. for the college football playoff. And that doesn't, you know, that hasn't happened at all for, for North Dakota state. But when I'm talking about preparation for this game and what North Dakota state needs to do to win it one I think you need to play a very similar game plan as you did against South Dakota. Stress their defensive backs. Take those deep shots. That, that, that is a version of Cam Miller that I have not really seen against difficult opponents. They've got a really good front seven, but I haven't necessarily seen a team successfully air out Montana. And you could have that opportunity because you've got some underrated receivers. Try to take those shots. Try to stress them deep, and then maybe that eventually does open up the run game a little bit because it's going to be hard to pick up a couple yards, um, you know, on any given play. I also think with Kava Hendricks, that defensive line, just continue to do your thing. You have to be stout along the line of scrimmage. Don't allow their backs to get going, just like Furman did. They played the line of scrimmage so tight, but most importantly, you got to do whatever you can to play good contain on Clifton McDowell. And I'll go as far as to say this: I'm a big Cole Wisniewski fan. Very good athlete, big safety, like a six foot four safety. I'm playing him in the box the whole game. I, he's not playing over the top at all. I'm bringing him in the box. He's a good tackler. He plays good angles. I might even, you know, ask him, him and some of the linebackers to play a permanent spy on him. If you can get eyes on 
Clifton McDowell, and you can keep him contained, yeah. that is your best hope for winning this football game. I think it's getting to him. I think, uh, and and you made a point of noting uh, in, a, in, a, in a rather passionate episode that I would say that at times this season, uh, Montana's offensive line has not done that great. They've stepped it up recently. The run game looks good. McDowell looks comfortable. Make him uncomfortable if you're North Dakota State. Whatever you can do. Yeah, interior pressure, exterior pressure, blitz, uh, uh, fake coverages, and, and just mix it up because McDowell is good enough to pick apart your base. I, I'm comfortable enough in this season to know that if you are just going to go out there and run base and try to bend, don't break, he he's going to strike and he's going to score some points on your ass. So Montana State needs to get creative on defense. Not go crazy, not engage eight, but get creative. Find the weak spot. Whoever your best pass rusher is first quarter, all I would be doing testing the offensive line, take it back to little league to who's your best athlete, put them on the worst athlete on, on, on the offensive line. Whoever's playing left guard, that's who it typically was. Pick on him, figure it out, make it a hard day for somebody. You have to break them down. You have to break them down or else Montana will meticulously pick you apart. They're good enough to do that. They're good enough to drive you down the field. Yeah, this is just going yeah, to – very simply put, I feel like this football game, one, could get really crazy. Like, I think that th what we saw from the Furman game is just, like, really scratching the surface for what this could be. Now – It's must-see. It's, ca it, it's capable of being a, a blowout, possibly. You know, the, the I'm not going to, you know, r leave that off the table. Somebody could get, like, really hot and really aggressive early, and it could just be lopsided quickly. But I think that with the with the rich history of both of these programs and the way that they've played in the playoffs and how dominant they've been at times in the playoffs, it's going to be a really highly contested football game. But like I feel like the winner, it's just going to come down to it's going to come down to the fourth quarter, and it's going to come down to who has the cleanest last drive of the game. That's oh. how I see this. And I'm not saying like a two minute. I like I don't think that this maybe even isn't like a two minute situation, but like. You know, does the final drive of the game for Montana, do, do they run the clock down and do they put points on the board? And then conversely, can North Dakota State do that? I, I feel like whoever plays the cleanest game, whoever doesn't turn the ball over and plays the cleanest football in the fourth quarter with this thing probably being within a score or three points, who finishes the game the strongest will win this football game. Interesting. I was uh, I was going the other direction. I thought it was going to be first to two points and first to turn the other or first to two touchdowns, first to get a turnover. Uh, I think I like that, that wins it. it. It's it's first to 14. Optimally, the best start you can have is opening drive touchdown, turn them over, touchdown again, and then 14 nothing hole, and they got to drive immediately in the first quarter. That's probably not going to happen. But first to two, first to one, uh, that's who I think because it's going to be – Neither I think both of these teams hang around to the fourth quarter. But that early cushion, vitally important. Vital. We'll see how these games play. Friday game, Saturday game. I'm going to be locked in. Sean's going to be locked in. At Joe DeLeon, at Sanderson Radio, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the other content that we're going to be doing throughout the remainder of the playoffs. We're also flipping back to the offseason schedule that we had uh, where we're going to be live on Thursdays. Gives us a little more time to do some longer episodes. We're going to continue to do the mailbags. Uh, if you do have any questions, Go comment on my Twitter post uh, where I ask for questions. I will keep resharing that. And if you want to get any questions in, it can be as stupid as you want. We love answering stupid questions. I think that uh, Chester asked us. There's what plenty was already. Our, but he asked us what are – this is one of my favorite questions. I think it was like what are Mount Rushmore is for fast food restaurants. So I thought that that yeah. was fun. But I saw uh, one asking about Prairie uh, Fire Shots. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I haven't had one since, pal. Haven't had one since. I've debated ordering one. We'll be back, folks. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.